pretty, it's looking pretty good. Let's see. Hello. Do you need it's, this? Uh, let me see it. Not the red. Try the white. Now? I'm trying to see it. Yeah, it looks good. All right. So it normally takes a little while for people to come in. I did not grab any water. Yeah. All right, you guys. So today we are going to talk about how to stick to our budget. And I have some notes here. And I'm also going to announce the winner of the giveaway as well. So I see that people are in here, but I can't see who. Hi, Joanne. Two. How's the weather where you are? So I'm gonna wait for people to come in. This is my second live and I'm looking really oily. Like y'all, <laughs> while I wait for people to come in, I'm gonna tell y'all what I did, right? So I was looking at some natural hair videos and you know, the weather with it being cold, like natural hair tends to get really like dry. And so they said to do an oil rinse. Ooh, Florida, I've been there, Key West. I've been there. I actually took a cruise. It's 70 there. I'm in Georgia, by the way. <laughs> so it ended up being kind of warm here. But yeah, I did an oil rinse and apparently I didn't wash all the oil out. And so I was just outside and I didn't know it was going to be that warm today or this warm today. And the oil just started like running into my face and down my back and it's just been a mess. So I feel like every time I go on to those natural hair care channels and I try to like replicate what they're doing, I feel like I always mess it up. It never turns out as gorgeous as, as theirs. So if I'm looking a little oily, that's that's why. So let's see, I'm going to do the giveaway and I guess I'll call all people's names and I guess if they're not just move on to the next name until until we get somebody <laughs> all right so I'm gonna give it a few more minutes and then I guess I will get started hello Kim oh Texas oh my goodness Nana Nance, hello. I am actually, we're actually moving back to Texas this summer. I am so excited. What part of Texas are you from or are you at? We have a house in League City. Um, it's like the Houston area, but we are moving to Fort Hood. So we're looking to possibly purchase in the Colleen area. Oh, Canada. Nice. How's the weather there? Yeah, so, oh my goodness. I cannot believe it's February. I cannot believe, like, what happened to January? Like, is it just me or does it feel like it just kind of, I can't see what that is. I feel like January just flew by. Anyway, you guys, so I have like these big hopes and dreams for February. I really want to stick to my budget. I've been doing very, very good, but a lot of things have been like coming up. For example, my husband's ranger school in January, that ended up being like over a thousand dollars. Very cold. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, yes, it flew by. And so let me see. Some of those expenses were ranger school, all that military equipment was like over a thousand dollars. Um, baseball ended up being a little bit more than I thought. And then we've had two birthdays. My daughter and my son are 12 months, five days apart. So we threw like a little birthday bash for the two of them. And it turned out costing a lot more than I originally planned. Um, we thought that by doing something like an experience, it would be cheaper than actually having a birthday party. So my daughter wanted to go to the aquarium and y'all, even when she got her ticket for free because it's her, it was her birthday. And even with her ticket being free, it still ended up being $172 for the aquarium. Oh God. Oh my God. I kept looking at the receipt. Like, did y'all overcharge me? Like what is going on? So now I have to like hustle and work really, really hard in February to kind of make up for 
what I didn't do or accomplish in January. So like my goals, my savings goals and things like that, I have to kind of backtrack a little bit. But my husband is going into the field or going out to the field for ranger school. And normally when he's not here, I don't know, y'all let me know if it's just me, but I feel like when my husband is home, I feel like this pressure to make these nice gourmet meals. And I don't know, I feel like I spend more money when he's home. And when he's out of town, I don't spend as much money. So I'm kind of hoping that with him being in the field or working away that I'll be able to save some more money. Let's see. All right. So I'm going to talk about four things. I'm looking over here at some notes. And I feel like, should I be looking here? Or if I'm looking over here, it's because I'm looking at comments and I'm trying to make sure I don't have any trolls. Car fixed today, $460, but thought it would be $520. So that's sweet. Budget tight, but didn't use from, oh, yay. Yeah, once you've been on a budget for a while and you kind of widen the gap between your income and your expenses, you can then, it's easier for you to cash flow things opposed to reaching to your emergency fund. Um, I'm actually thinking about transferring some of the money out of the emergency fund into like either a different savings account or investing it or putting it towards a mortgage because we don't really have to dip in there. And I don't know, I feel like the money is just sitting there. So yeah, that is interesting. Good stuff. Glad you didn't have to dip into your emergency fund. Wow. Well, so four things that I think we should be doing to try to stick to our budget. And then y'all chime in and let me know what y'all think. Um, but the first thing is I feel like we should reassess our budgets to make sure that they are actually realistic. I feel like oftentimes we set these like crazy goals. Like y'all know what I'm talking about. Those people have like six or seven kids and they'll be like, oh, we're going to have, we're only going to spend $400 on groceries for the month. Like I'm talking about like being realistic with your goals and expectations and all that kind of stuff. I see somebody else. Ooh, just did a month of no spending. How did that go? I haven't done a no spend month in a while. Um, so yeah, the first thing that I think we should do is really reassess our budget, our budgets, especially those who are always going over budget. I don't know if if y'all know what I'm talking about, but like setting these goals and then mid-month you're like, wow, where did my grocery budget go? Or where did my gas budget go? Like, are we being realistic with our expectations with our money? Um, the second thing is to commit to a couple of no spend days. And I do this. Um, I just find that when I try to do a no spend month, sometimes I just feel so like constricted and just, I don't know. I've done it before, like when we were in baby step two, when we were getting out of all of our consumer debt, um, we did no spend months. I know January and September, definitely. And sometimes depending on whatever our goals were, uh, we would do another one like around um, like March or April. But I just feel like whenever I would put that constraint on myself to not spend, it would make me want to spend even more. So the last two years, what I've been doing is committing to no spend days. So like, for example, I'll say, okay, on Tuesdays, I'm not spending any money. And then on Tuesdays, I'll commit to staying at home, really cleaning up. Sorry, y'all, my phone is like going crazy. Okay, it's my neighbor. Okay, I'll call it back in a minute. Um, Sorry, y'all. So yeah, so a couple of no spend months throughout or no spend days throughout the month, I feel like it can really, really help kind of reset things. And then during the times that you're not spending money, just committing to like organizing your house, purging, decluttering, cleaning. And oftentimes when you start to do those things, it really makes you not want to spend money. Like if you're having the desire to spend money on clothes by going into your closet and purging and really taking care of the items that you already have, you realize like, Hey, I have enough. And then it makes you not want to spend money or you spend so much time doing that, that you forget that you even want to spend money. So yeah, so that's, that's just my advice. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. But yeah, just committing to certain days or committing to a certain number of days. So it may not be like a particular day, like on a Tuesday or something like that, but it might be out of 
28 days, I want to spend, I, I want to have like at least seven no spend days, something realistic and attainable and not too hard to accomplish. Does that make sense? Let's see what are y'all saying? Oh, 15. Yes. That money just sitting there. Yes. I feel like when you're doing that no spend month, it's almost like you start having withdrawals and then you find stuff to do at your time. And then you get in a routine and a habit of not spending money. And then you're able to do more creative things. Like, like you said, reading, writing, introspection, self-reflection, things like that. Um, Nana Nance. So that $15,000, is it sitting, do you at least have it in a high interest yielding account like Ally or Capital One? Because we just recently switched over to, there's like this competition with the online banks for the amount of interest that they're offering. And um, right now Ally is offering 2.2. So we just switched from Capital One to Ally just for the 2.2. Um, I'll let y'all know how that goes. But yeah, that our emergency fund, it is starting to really like bother me. Like that money has just been sitting there. I'm grateful to God that, you know, we have it. And I'm grateful that we have that gap to where, um, you know, we can cash flow things. And if y'all haven't checked out my budget video, I actually share real numbers. I was really nervous to do that. But so y'all can kind of see that we do have like some money to play with every month. Um, I saw something. Oh, yeah. OK, I saw that. All right. So I talked about reassessing. I talked about the no spend days. And then another thing is tracking your spending. So like in order for me to stick to my budget this month, I'm going to track all of my expenses. And this kind of ties into number four, which is number four is reconciling your budget. Often I find that the more you reconcile, it really kind of like forces you to stay in line with your budget because you start to see like, okay, I'm veering off. I'm spending too much money. Another thing about reconciling is that like the more receipts and the more transactions that you have to reconcile, it can be very difficult and annoying thing. And so kind of not to spend as much because you don't want to have so many transactions that you have to calculate and things like that. So those are the others too. They kind of work hand in hand because um, when you're tracking your expenses, you're just writing down everything. But the follow up to that is to actually go and calculate to see how much you're spending in each category and seeing how it lines up with your budget and really assessing like, OK, it's the 15th. I'm already like three fourths done with my grocery budget. Am I going to make it to the end of the month? And if not, what am I going to do? Where am I going to pull this money from? So doing those two things right there, I feel really will help you to stay within budget. Some other people joined and y'all just let me know like where y'all are from and all that good stuff. Okay. So yeah. And of course you could always do instead of a no spend Instead of no spend days, you could do a no spend month, which I think that February is a good month to do that for a lot of people because it's the shortest month. <laughs> but the thing about it is there was Valentine's Day and something else. Oh, for me, I have birthdays, my daughter and my husband's birthdays. As a matter of fact, my husband's birthday is tomorrow. So it's hard for me to commit to a no spend when I know that they're going to want to spend money on their birthdays. I'm from, oh, you're from Canada too. Oh, thank you, Angela. Thank you. Yeah, I've been really loving sharing my frugal tips and tricks and hacks. That's like my thing. And I feel like in my real life, I can't really share those things because people think that I'm weird. So I just decided to come on here. And then I loved when I just started getting comments like, telling me other things, like other frugal things. I'm like, wow. Like, so I'm learning from you all and I get the satisfaction of being able to share. And then when people in my real life do ask me questions, I have a video to refer them to. So and chat now and oh, wow. Wow. $50 a month is a lot. That adds up. It really, really does. Wow. So, so what area of your budgets 
do you struggle with the most? For me, it's the groceries. Like it's a monthly thing that I have to really be vigilant about. Um, and then when I am successful, I'm like, yay! Like you would swear that I I won like the Nobel Peace Prizes. I'm so excited that I stayed in budget and all that good stuff. Hey, hey Gab. Gabrielle had a basketball game today. So I had a lot going on today, y'all. I did a giveaway over on Instagram. I also gave a Savvy Sense wallet away over on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you probably want to follow me because at some point I'm going to give away a gift card. I'm giving away a gift card once I hit 10,000 subscribers, which I don't know when that'll be, y'all, but I don't know. I guess I'm going to do it electronically. So I was wondering, I thought maybe I should give away an Aldi card um, since so many people said they like Aldi, but I don't know how I, how I would get that to y'all. I would actually have to um, do it in the like put it in the mail and send it out to y'all. And then I thought about maybe a Walmart gift card, like if someone wants to buy groceries or, you know, Walmart has anything and everything in there. So I thought about giving away that and I could do that electronically. And then I thought about an Amazon gift card. I thought that would be cool to do as well. But I don't know. What do y'all think? Amazon gift card or Walmart or what do y'all think? Um, yeah. So the next thing I'm giving away is a gift card. And right now I have... I have 9,243 subscribers. So I'm hoping that I get to 10,000 soon so I can give this gift card away. So let me know what y'all think I should give away. Okay. All right. So I was going to go ahead on and actually pick out the no Aldi. There's no Aldi in Canada? No way. Oh, okay. Amazon is a good one. Okay. Yeah. I lately y'all. So I've been working. Okay. So I actually went over on my grocery budget this month, kind of purposely, like it was in kind of intentional, but so I've been working from home and my time is very limited. So if I'm already on the side of town where there are groceries and things like that, I'll go ahead and pick those things up so that I don't have to, depending on which child I have with me. There is no Aldi or Walmart in Key West. When I went to Key West um, or when I visited Key West, um, there was like a shopping area that had lots of stores, like, but it was touristy too. So, but now that I think about it, because the boat stopped there for like excursions and stuff, I don't remember, um, I don't remember there being an Aldi or Walmart. What do y'all have there? Let me see. Make sure you are paying off your debt to use up all points. I was able to get a hundred dollar gas card. Which um which points are you talking about, Scarlett? Which card are you talking about? Win Dixie and Publix. Aww. I like Publix, but I kind of feel like they're overpriced a little bit. I like their BOGOs, and especially like if you're going to use coupons, it's good, but they are a bit overpriced. Um, I'm not sure about Win Dixie. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, y'all, you know, I was actually going to talk about that tonight, but I decided to do the budget since it's the first of the month. <sighs> Goodness, I am just. After reconciling with the credit cards, I do feel that I spend more. I hate to say it. I want to say like that I'm all responsible and everything. But the last couple of months, I think it started around Christmas because we were um, traveling. But the last couple of months, I feel like I spent more. So I actually pulled out cash today. Did I bring my wallet? Oh, it's downstairs. But yeah, I actually pulled out cash today and I'm like, I'm done. Um, it's not that I'm, um, I'm sorry, I'm talking and reading at the same time. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so about the credit cards really quickly. So yes, I have been getting tons of points, but it's because I've been doing like tons of shopping. But 
it is me doing like the grocery shopping so that I don't have to continue to go out back and forth. I'm thinking about switching to once a month grocery hauls um, just to keep me from having to go back and forth to the grocery store all the time. But yeah, um, the credit card thing started with me trying to do that Walmart grocery pickup and you know that you have to order online and also me trying to get those, um, not the extra points because I don't do um, travel points, I do cash back, but trying to get the cash back reward, like the initial promo to sign up. So normally it'll be like $250 once you spent like 1500 or 500 once you spent like 4,500. So it always started like that. And I feel like during Christmas is when I kind of got out of control. I mean, I would square it up and pay it all off every month or whatever. Um, or as soon as I make the transaction after it post, I paid off. But still, like there were so many transactions and it was easier for me to say yes, because I could just swipe the card versus me having that cash and filling that stack of cash getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then it's like a trigger for me to scale back, which is another way that you can stay in budget, by the way, you guys is switching from using a card to using cash. So, um, and then, okay. About the meat guy at the Walmart. Okay. So it is really, really like important or it is a good idea to become familiar with like your favorite grocery stores and like the different departments. For example, when we lived in Houston, like I knew all of the people that worked at Aldi, I knew them like by name. And so like they would know what types of things I normally shop for. So they would tell me like, okay, we're gonna mark down our meat at, you know, in the morning. So make sure that you're here first thing in the morning. And sure enough, I would get there and their meats would be half off or we're getting, we're getting ready to mark all this stuff down for clearance or like all the Christmas stuff, we're going to mark it down. So if you come at this time, like you'll be, you'll have first picks. And it's the same thing at Walmart, like um, their rotisserie chickens and stuff like that. They mark them down around seven. So I said all that to say, it's good to get to know the people that work in the bakery, the meat department, um, your stores, like Aldi, all of the workers get to know all of them because they will hook you up. And I'm not, I'm not talking about like stealing or anything like that, but they'll let you know what time they're marking things down and what types of items are, um, you know, coming in stuff so you can get kind of first picks. Hey, <laughs> um, yes, get to know your people. Yes, yes, yes. Don't. And they they like when you talk to them, they like building that rapport because, I mean, sometimes they're bored at work and sometimes, you know, I don't know. They feel, I don't want to say important, but appreciate it when you talk to them and let them know like, Hey, well, thank you for letting me know. Or, you know, once you're on a first name basis with them and you're actually coming looking for them. And I don't know, I miss my Aldi from um, Texas. Like, Oh my gosh, I saved so much money there. I knew all the people by the end, they were trying to get me to work there. Y'all, they were like, please come work for us. I knew where everything was. I knew like everything about that store. Um, as a matter of fact, like if you pay attention to Aldi and even Walmart, but Aldi in particular, they bring the same things out every year around the same time. Um, they have the same things that go on sale. You can really get to know their sales cycles. So if you pair knowing their sales cycles with knowing the people that work there and when they mark things down, oh my gosh, like meats. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The meat guy at Walmart. Oh, wow. Wow. You know what? Speaking about butchers, have y'all ever considered like buying a whole cow or a whole pig or like splitting it with a family? Let me know in the comment section because that is something that I've always wanted to do. However, like I'm kind of, I'm an animal lover. I know that's kind of like contradictory being that I eat meat again. I used to be vegan by the way, but, um, I don't feel like I, my friend told me that you actually go and pick your pig. And I feel like if I go pick it, then I'm not going to be able to eat it. So let me know what y'all think about that. It was gross meat. Is that what she said, Michelle? You did a pig and it was gross meat. Oh, no, Leanne. Did you call them? Okay, so Shay, I lived in League City. So they had um, one in Webster. They had a few. They had a lot of um, Aldi's in our area. Um, 
There are there are a lot of Aldi's in Texas. I don't know why you don't have one close to you. What part of Texas are you in? Oh, Tough Meat. Mm, that's interesting. I always hear that like when you get fresh meat from the butcher that it tastes like way better. Like I this is my first time Hearing that, I, I have heard mixed reviews on deer meat because someone told me that it tastes really gamey and that it's not for everyone. Uh, let me see. I, I cannot believe, I cannot believe that, that Savvy Sense wallet came like that. Oh, San Antonio. I used to live there too. Um, I actually was um, stationed at Fort Sam Houston. And we actually thought about buying rental property there. But now that you told me that they don't have an Aldi, we probably won't. <laughs> you donated the meat to a food bank because you didn't like it? Oh my goodness. Wow, Angela, that's a good point. Scarlett, that's a good point too. She said it depends on what they're fed. Leanne, I'm going to have to go check your channel out. Okay. It cuts the gaminess. Okay. I've never had it. I'm scared. I think it's because like Bambi used to be my, <laughs> this is so immature. Oh my gosh. So juvenile. But I just, I don't know. I don't know if I would like it or not. I've never had it. Oh, well, thank you for joining us, Michelle. Yes, Shay. I love Quick Trip. I love Quick Trip. They don't have one here where I'm living at, but when I used to live in Atlanta, they had them all around. I love during the summer when you can get the different slushies and mix them. And I also like their um, cappuccino machines. You can mix all the flavors. I love Quick Trip. I love Quick Trip. Really? Yes, I am at Fort Benning. What does your brother do here? Is he a drill sergeant or is he an instructor or is he in a school? Okay. Oh, wow. I'm reading y'all's comments. Oh, yes. Quick trip hot dog stations. Yeah, my kids love that. All of those things on the little hot spinning thing. Wow. Okay. The box, the 40 pound box. Did you get that from Zaycon or is it something that you bought from a butcher? Oh my goodness. So, all right. So, Leanne said that the Savvy Scent wallet that she got was torn. Do y'all still want the Savvy Scent wallet? I actually had picked the name. But I don't see the name of the person that randomly got picked. I don't see their name on here. So I'm thinking that I'm going to put all y'all's name in the random thing and pick right now. Are y'all okay with that? Let me see. OMG, OMG. I actually, okay, he's a sergeant major. So he's probably, there's no telling what he's doing here. Um, there are lots of schools and things going on. So that's interesting, though. I wonder if I've seen him. I'm always like, every time someone tells me that they're at Fort Benning or in Columbus or anything like that, I'm always wondering, I'm like, I wonder if I've like driven by them and just didn't realize it or if they saw me at the commissary or I saw them at like Aldi. Because another lady told me that she goes to the same Aldi that I do. And yeah. I saw that. I saw that, Leanne, that it sold out. Ah, oh, McGuffey. Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't recall that name, but Fort Benning is big, but small. If you know what I mean? Like, hmm. It's interesting. Now I'm going to be looking every sergeant major that I see. I'm going to be like, I wonder, I wonder if that's Michelle's, what did you say? Brother? can't see. Someone told me that, that the eyelet one 
And I personally had issues with the patent leather black one. I did a video about that a long time ago, but it scratched up real easily. Okay, so I'm going to put all y'all's names into the random thing and pick one if y'all are okay with that. Um... Okay, so I see that there are about, on my end, it's looking like it's 17 or 18 people. So just if you want to be in the drawing, just say like me or something. <laughs> so I put in the names. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. This is so funny and fun. Okay. So, yeah, if I'm looking, I'm looking at y'all's names. So, Scarlett, Angela, Malkin, This is so weird, like, <laughs> See, I'm on the phone. Get crochet. Let me see. John. Sorry, this is taking me so long, y'all. <laughs> um, y'all see me? I hope I said that right. And we will have a reservoir. Oh, this is my phone. <laughs> I tried to scroll it down. Okay, and then Kim, do you want to be in it too? Oh, yes, Kim. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to talk about that in a few seconds. See me. Kim. Uh -huh, simply money. Hmm. <laughs> old enough old enough for what are y'all ready for me to pick a name anyone else anyone else want to be in the drawing okay here we go let's see Millie Ann It picked you. It, I typed it. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it came up mi Milky Ann, like, because I was typing really fast and it like auto corrected. So, Milky Ann, I know it's Millie Ann. <laughs> it picked you. Hold on, let me see. So, what I need you to do is message me or email me your information or email me and then let me know which one you want and then I'll get it sent out to you. Yay, congratulations. That was so fun. It feels so amazing to give you guys. Oh my gosh. Yay. <laughs> um, so really quickly, um, I feel like, okay. All right, so, oh, you're in Myrtle Beach, Millian. I've been there. It's gorgeous there. Oh, my gosh. And then I saw someone said that they do. Oh, Michelle, thank you. Yeah, I make videos about frugal living. I didn't think anyone would be interested in that kind of stuff. And apparently, like, people are really interested in that. Um, I always thought I was weird for, like, wanting to save money. Um. Yes, Kim, I do understand my husband's pay, but that is probably because I'm prior service too. 
So yeah, when I got out, I was in E5. So yeah, and then my parents were military too. So um, I do live hangouts in the morning overlooking the ocean. I try as often as I can during the week. That is awesome. What do you mean you do live hangouts? Like people come or is it like virtual? And I see that it's free. Y'all know I'm a freegan. <laughs> I love free stuff. <laughs> um, oh, that is interesting. I didn't know people did that. Just snuck, just like go to like be a part of giveaways just to get the free item. I didn't know people did that. <laughs> Thank you, CJ. Oh, oh, I am very honored to have served. My husband loves being in the military too. Anytime. Oh, how do you guys decide to start your IG and not be anonymous? How and why? Huh, I wasn't anonymous because I already had a YouTube channel, but when I started YouTube, it wasn't like how it is now, like how people are like really like strategic about making money on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. I just did it because like as a military spouse, it was a way for me to meet other military spouses and for my family and friends to kind of still see what we were doing if we weren't living close. So I already had a YouTube channel. And so I just did something dealing with the YouTube channel, but I wanted to be part of the debt-free community, like be a part of, you know, a community of people that were trying to get out of debt and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I did that. Um, so since I wasn't anonymous on YouTube, I didn't feel it necessary once I, you know, joined um, Instagram. I was going to say IG, but Instagram. Um, this was my first time. Well, the last two budget updates was the first time that I really shared our real numbers. So that was a little bit of a, it took some courage to do that um, because what is a small shovel to some, maybe a big shovel to others. And then I didn't want people to think that I was bragging or I didn't want people to think I was like poor. I, I don't know. Like I just didn't want people to judge me. But being that my husband is military, um, all of that information is public information. So it's like, why am I hiding something that people can find if they really wanted to? Oh, okay. I'm going to have to check you out, Leanne. Oh, no problem, love, peace, joy. Oh, okay. Wait, I saw someone said, tell your sister-in-law and your brother thank you for their service. I appreciate that so much. Um, sharing your stuff. There are a lot of, or I won't say a lot, but there are some military people in the debt-free community if you don't want to share yourself or whatever, um, if you want to be anonymous, that's totally fine. Um, I can understand why he would be a bit apprehensive. Like <laughs> my husband, someone actually walked up to him two days ago and saw his one of his videos that he did about infantry school. It was the most oddest thing ever. Um, so it's like now I don't now that not only do they have a face with a name, they also see the budget stuff. It can be a bit much. So I can understand why he would be apprehensive. Um, oh, and y'all are both military. Hmm. That's a, that's a tough one. I guess it depends on what exactly you want to share. And also, I mean, you could be anonymous. You could use an emoji, not an emoji. What is that? Bitmoji? I think that's what they're called. So Yeah. Maybe just, yeah, just start being anonymous. Maybe have an icon or um, like instead of using your, your actual face, just use a, you can just create something on PicMonkey, a logo. And then you can just start posting and just don't show your face, but show like other things or maybe your silhouette or something like that. Um, or you can use a fake name, like instead of your actual name, like I have Slay This Debt. Um, you can do, you know, debt free military. No, that one's taken, but something, something like that. Uh, 
Uh, my daughter is on here asking if her friend can come over. If your room is clean, then yes. <laughs> oh, thick skin. So, um, oh, bye, Scarlett. Thank you. Um, thick skin. On the videos that I've done recently, the government shutdown video, holy cow. Like the negative videos, uh, the negative comments on that video is crazy. Bye CJ. Yay. Yeah. Have a good night. We'll have to do it again sometime. Mo money military. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Mo money military wipe. I love that. You regret using your name? You know, I don't know if I regret it. Sometimes I, I want to change Slay This Debt because I feel like there's so much more to life than debt, but now I feel like I'm stuck with the name. So <laughs> I don't know. I like Mo Military, Mo Money Military Wife. I might have to take that one. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> she is a trip. My daughter is, she is a trip. If y'all have not seen that Con Marie video, oh my goodness, go check that out because I still laugh at that when I see it. Yeah, Leanne, you can change your name, right? I don't know. I don't know if she's still here, but well, that is it. Did y'all have any questions before I go? And don't forget to the winner, Millie, don't forget to email me your information. Oh, thank you, Kim. Oh, oh my goodness. Y'all are going to make me cry. Thank you. Recon to me to the pit. Oh, why? Oh, I don't know why I did that. No problem, Millian. Oh, oh, is it too personal to ask what I make on YouTube? It's kind of funny because I used to not make much until just recently. So now I'm making about a thousand to about sixteen hundred. So we will see how that goes. Um, it kind of happened. Good night. Have a good night. Um, yeah. So about a thousand to sixteen hundred, and it really depends on how often I'm posting, what type of videos I'm posting, and it just depends on a lot. So when I'm saying that, oh, no problem. No problem at all. Have a good night, Simply Melly. So uh, yeah, so when I'm saying that I'm working from home, that is what I'm doing. I'm doing like YouTube stuff because the editing is, it takes a while. And that's why I don't make certain videos that often because like vlogs, I feel like a lot of people want to see vlogs, um, but they are so time consuming to edit. Um, yeah, it's turned out to be a nice little hustle. Um, I do kind of struggle with the ads, like should I put ads on my videos or how many ads or too many ads? Oh, oh, no problem. No problem at all. If you have any questions, I'm here. Yes, iMovie is great. I actually, if you're interested in Final Cut Pro, if you have a Mac, they actually give you a 30-day trial. And guess what, you guys? I signed up for the 30-day trial and I was so busy, I never got a chance to even use it. And they want a lot for Final Cut Pro. I don't think that I'm going to switch over because it's like $300, maybe even $500. I just can't see myself doing it. Um... Yes, it takes a lot of time. So again, when I'm saying that I'm working from home, that is one of the things that I'm doing. I'm doing YouTube stuff. And as of lately, um, I've had people in the same circle see that I've had a couple of videos 
that I won't say they went viral, but they got a lot of views and they tried to replicate those same videos. And so that's what I'm kind of running into now is like how to keep my content unique and fresh and relative um, and like present it in a way that cannot be easily duplicated. Because at some point when you're talking about frugal living, I mean, everyone is going to have the same answers. You know what I'm saying? So... Oh, the blog thing. So the thing about blogs is I actually tried this because I'm just trying to kind of figure out what side hustles work. And then I'm going to come back and let y'all know, like, what side hustles I've actually tried that have worked and brought in money. Because I feel like as a stay at home mom, that's the thing. Those are the things that I want to know. I want to know how to make money from home. And so everyone was like, oh, start a blog, start a blog. Well, what ended up happening was hi Erica no problem yay oh my gosh congratulations oh okay let me tell you real quick what I get I get like sidetracked with the comments with the blog y'all I came back from FinCon and I tried to start a blog and I ended up spending more money than I really wanted to and I just feel like I didn't have like the right concept. I feel like, I don't know, something about it is not clicking for me. It's like, how do I get people to read this? And like, why would people want to read this? And like, it's kind of time consuming too. So because I was already making money off of YouTube and it was like an instant kind of guaranteed money um, that I didn't really have to kind of build up. I mean, I can still build up, of course, and to make more money and bring in more money and stuff like that. But with the blog and just starting it from scratch, I don't know. I just got turned off and I spent money on like hosting and domain and all this kind of stuff to make it look pretty. And then it's just like, I can't, I can't seem to get it off the ground. I don't know. So, and then right now I'm so consumed with the editing and stuff for, YouTube, I'm kind of having a hard time finding the time to actually put content on the blog. So I don't know what to say about that one. Um, oh, thank you. So you said you're going to do an IG and start a blog instead of YouTube. So that, I mean, if it works for you, you have to do whatever works for you. And it might be good for you to do that way since you want to be anonymous. I know Mr. Money Mustache, he stayed anonymous for years. So you can definitely do that. And then someone said, oh, thank you, Erica. I found that there was a need for someone to speak about Baby Step 6. When I was looking for content on that, on YouTube, I wasn't finding very much content. And I feel like once people get through the baby steps, I feel like they forget about baby step six. Like a lot of people, I think they're so burnt out on baby step two that they either don't make it to baby step six or they get to baby step six and they're just not as, um, I don't want to say gazelle intense, but they just don't care as much by the time they get to baby step six. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And what is the name of your blog? I want to check it out. Oh, Erica, no problem. The meetup was good. And I did not mention it on YouTube because that's another reason why if y'all are not following me on Instagram, please go follow me on Instagram because I like I'm kind of I'm more personal on Instagram. I share more personal stuff over there. I did not share about the free meetup in Atlanta on YouTube because during that time I had a lot of trolls that were coming over from the government shutdown videos and even some frugal living videos had some trolls on there. And so I didn't want to come on here and say, hey, we're going to meet up at this place at this time. And then I have some weirdos or crazies show up. So it was more of a safety thing. Now, I know we are going to do another meetup in Atlanta, like around the springtime. And then I am also hosting a meetup during the summer in Texas. Texas. So, and I'm working right now with Ari from the Frugal Freaks to kind of pull that one together in Texas. I'm also working with a couple of other Instagrammers as well to kind of pull the Texas meetup together. So, and we're also, we're doing one in Houston and we're also doing one in like 
close to Fort Hood, the Harker Heights Temple. Um, what else is around there? Colleen, that little area right there. So they're not in the mood to share when they get that far. I need to make an IG account. Yes. Yeah, and they're not in the mood. <laughs> Yeah, they do. Like after baby step, I feel like baby step three, they save up. I don't want to say everyone, but it seems like people like save up the money and then they find other things to do with it. They they ended up, they, I think they end up doing things that they wish they could have done during baby step two because they've gone so gazelle intense during baby step two and put off so much stuff. Um, they end up coming back during baby step three and doing all the things that they didn't get to do in baby step two. And I feel like it's kind of like when you do a no spend month and then you end up coming back the next month and you end up spending a whole bunch of money because you felt like, like kind of, what is the word that I'm looking for? Not restricted, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So I feel like that's what happens with the baby steps. Um, let me see. Okay, blog spot. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And Erica, where are you located? Are you in Atlanta? Oh, Kim, you're at Fort Hood right now? People will dox you. Oh, goodness. Um, okay, so let me see. I don't know why they keep retracting your comments. I don't know what this is. This is only my second live. Um, what is going on? Something. I clicked on something. Okay. Um... So yeah, I wish you were slip hood when I get there. I will be there during the summer. And so that's that's the reason why we're doing the meetup then. And we're kind of going back and forth as to whether or not we want to purchase or live on post. I'm getting a lot of mixed feedback from the wives on Fort Hood about whether or not we should live on post or move off post. Um yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, you guys, I guess I will hop off of here. Um, don't forget to email me your information. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do so. My handle is at Slay This Debt. And I am going to try to do another live sometime soon, possibly Friday. I'll definitely like pop on here and let y'all know like when the next live is. And don't forget that I am going to be doing a giveaway once I get to 10,000 subscribers. I'm thinking about giving away. Well, I know it's definitely going to be a gift card. I'm trying to figure out what kind because a lot of places don't have Aldi. So I'm thinking Walmart or Amazon. Amazon is everywhere is global. So I'm probably going to do Amazon. So yeah, I guess I will hop off of here, you guys. And oh, right now I'm at 9,200 and like 42 or 43 subscribers. So hopefully I'll be at 10,000 soon and I can give away that gift card. So, all right, you guys, I guess I'm going to go. Y'all have an amazing weekend and I hope that your budget goes well this month. And yeah, thank y'all so much for hanging out tonight. Bye. Have it ended.